Hello YouTube! It's been a long time since I uploaded anything, but... Well, okay, I admit, I was a bit lazy. And YouTube doesn't really pay that much <laughs> these days. Uh, but I do have something new. Um, some time ago I got an, a Genesis Coupe from USA, from Copart. I did rebuild that car and, you know, it's a fun project car. 2.0, nothing fancy, not too strong, but I'm actually quite happy with it. So, the car is like, I think, uh, 120,000 miles right now, so it's due for the timing chain. And I decided to record this. I mean, there are some videos out there, but, I mean, the more the better, right? So, I'll just try to walk you through, through the process of, you know, getting to your timing chain and getting it changed. Maybe this will be a useful video for, you know, the owners out there that are just about to do this job themselves. So, there are two ways to approach this job. You can either um, do what I did and pull out the whole front of the car and I did it to, you know, have really easy access and just to make sure that I won't damage the radiator but you don't have to pull out the front. I mean, you can't do this job uh, without pulling out the radiator or the support. Uh, it's just your preferences. I prefer to have some more space and, you know, just to be able to assess the state of the hoses and stuff around the engine a bit better. I mean, you can easy see easier if you, like, have the sole front removed. And it's actually not that much of work to remove it because Hyundai uh, conveniently provided like um, a disconnect point for the harnesses for the front and essentially you, the lamps, uh, the bumper, they just easily disconnect and then there's like five, two or four bolts for one side and the whole support goes out as a whole one element. Moreover, taking out the bumper, the support, the headlamps, I mean it all takes like maybe three hours or so, maybe even less, I would say, yeah, even less if you're, even if you're not in a hurry, right? Uh, it's easy job and it's gonna just make your life way, way easier, especially access to the crankshaft pulley. I mean, it's, you really need to have a lot of strength over there and some leverage to get it, uh, you know, uh, bolted back or unbolted and you want that space. So, you know, it's up to preference, but really I suggest to just remove the whole front. Now, I will speed up the video so you can just see the steps, but I'm essentially going to remove the uh, radiator, the AC radiator and all the hoses. Uh, there's one thing with the AC radiator though. I mean, it is under pressure, so without the uh, spe special... Spe Without a tool to, you know, just evacuate the gas, you cannot unplug this unplug this uh, radiator. So, you know, you will have to have it dangling around. Um, it's not that inconvenient. I mean, I was able to, you know, work around this and, you know, even with, with it, you know, just being in the way, you still have so much space without the front end that it's just not a big deal. So, enjoy. Now, at this moment, I already trained the cooling system, but as usual, there's always something down there. So, you know, just remember to have 
uh, like a bucket or something under the radiator because otherwise you will make a mess. Just another pointer, as you can see over here, the radiator is connected to the intercooler by four bolts. And now, the next problem is that the radiator is connected with the AC radiator, and they are kind of slotted together. So in order to get the coolant radiator out, what you need to do is first get those intercooler bolts out, then pull the both radiators, the AC and the cooling system, a bit up and then you basically need to push the coolant radiator down and the AC cooler up. Uh, this way it will just unslide from the uh, cooling system bracket. 
I'm not sure how to properly say this in English, but essentially they are sandwiched together and um, there's like a U-shaped uh, hook on the rad cooling system radiator that holds onto AC cooling radiator and you just need to you know move one down and another pull another one up to get them separated you know it takes a bit of wiggling just be very gentle not to damage them Now I'm pulling the intercooler out. It's not really connected, you just have to get the hoses out and then it's basically like sitting on top of a um, like a cone, it's basically just pushed in there. There are no screws that hold it. You just have to pull it up, wiggle it up a bit um, from its place, and it's just gonna go up. Nothing too problematic, to be honest. Now is the time for the core support for the full front, as you can call it. I mean, they're like three screws each side and you know just a bit of wiggling and it's out and just check how much space you have now okay so new day and as you can see we have plenty of space uh, front is completely out and you know off camera i did remove some elements like i pulled out the pulleys <laughs> remove the belt serpentine belt pull out the pulleys and stuff like that now the motor itself is extremely dirty you could go forward and just you know get at with the disassembly but uh, I'm, we're gonna work on a, on a on basically on the time chain and we have an open motor right right so you don't want to have all of this grime that you see over here and you know it's hard to remove this stuff i really hate this so what i used is basically an engine degreaser and a manual very cheap vape machine basically um, basically it's generating steam like a steam machine but very very you know amateurish this like it's designed for like uh, stealing your clothes or stuff like that but the one that I have it's I don't know I got like 10 bucks uh, still it did perform very well uh, with the degreaser I was able to remove the grit and all this dirt fairly easy I mean it was it did take a bit of time but uh, I'm, I was very happy with the results so you know whenever you're going to work on like an open engine you really 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 don't want any grime any sand inside right it's just gonna make you it's just gonna you're just gonna have a bad time so before you open a motor clean it and you know the better machine you have it the better it's gonna be for you but i had what i had and this was actually doing the job just fine
used to it. Okay, the motor is clean now. I removed the top cover, um, the valve cover of camera. And you know, one point, if you're in that deep, it's really, it will really pay off to get the valve clearances adjusted. And I mean, Hyundai uses um, so-called MLA. I think it's called uh, like a bucket as a shim. Basically, they provide buckets with a set uh, thickness that you can you know, just put between your camshaft and the valve steam and that's gonna dictate your valve clearances. Now, my car is 120,000 miles and you know, the intake was basically spot on. There was no problem with the intake. But the exhaust valves, especially with the fourth cylinder exhaust valve, was, um, it, it, it had a bit of a slack. Uh, I mean, the tolerance is 0 0.40 millimeter and I was on 0.38. So, you know, I was close to the limit. Uh, the design specification is like 0.27 to 0.33, I think. So, you know, if you're in there, uh, if you're gonna do a tim timing chain, uh, really worth to spend some additional time and some additional money for the MLAs and, you know, just do the timing chain, uh, do the timing, uh, not timing, do the valve clearances while you're at it. Um, now, you can swap the MLAs between the valves. I mean, you need a micrometer to measure them and if you have one that matches to another cylinder and you need to change that one, you can just move it out. So you don't have to buy them all if you're lucky. I had to buy like uh, six of them, or no, five of them, and I basically got all the valves adjusted. Now, I guess you can see I'm setting up the uh, first cylinder in top dead center. Um, you want to see the crankshaft uh, like a slot to be horizontal and point into the passenger side and, uh, with the block. And you want to see the camshafts and the sprockets on the camshafts basically you know, having the marks pointing, uh, pointing at each other. And do note there are two marks on the sprockets for the camshafts. One is a line that designates the position of the camshafts between them. And another mark is like a dot that designates the time chain link that has to be set on that specific, uh, you know, mark. So first set your top dead center and make sure that the camshafts are facing each other with the line mark. Okay, so next is the oil pan and basically the crankshaft pulley. Uh, I mean, you can do it in any order, just uh, it really helps to have a pneumatic, pneumatic or whatever you call that, uh, pneumatic gun that, uh, you know, helps you with getting out the bolt because it's gonna be in there tight. Uh, you can bet on that. You also need something to lock or block the crankshaft pulley from turning on you when you just remove the screw. Uh, I mean, I use like a special tool that I just happened to buy specifically for this occasion. Um, you may just have something else, but you need to block it. Otherwise, you won't be able to get out this screw out of there. We are getting closer to the timing chain, chain part. I mean, now it's the time to remove the front cover. Um, there's gonna be a bit of cleaning afterwards because there's gonna be a sitting gasket. And my advice is to just move out the power, power string pump out of the way. It's gonna just, uh, it's gonna be easier for you to remove the front lid. If you don't have that, you know, just uh, in there.
We want to start off by removing the tensioner, then just you know work your way in there, remove the guides, remove the chain itself. Uh, there's one thing though, if you want to block the camshafts, they will turn on you. So depending how you want to do the job, I was I was removing the MLAs, I was doing the valve timing, so I didn't care. But if you don't want them to move on you. Just block them with some kind of a, I think, size 17 spanner or any other vice or, or anything that you can grab. They have a specific place you can grab them by and just block them. And just keep removing the elements. Was du nicht gestern hier in meiner Badewanne? Was du nicht gestern hier irgendwo in meinem Haus? Was du nicht gestern hier? Komm schon, lass es sein, lass es sein, schluck es auf. And I said, Ooh, sex lady, do you wanna be my baby? I said, Ooh, sex lady, do you want? And I said, Ooh, sex lady. Brown, baby, 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 
für meine Plattensammlung gestohlen und geraubt. Und dann warst du auch noch auf meiner Toilette und hast die hoffnungslos versaut. Und wenn ich dich mal wieder sehe, wenn du unter meiner Dusche stehst, ich ärgere mich so fürchterlich Doch dann mach ich nichts Und das ist Baby, 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 Baby Okay, so next day, uh, I'm finally ready to start the install process for the chain and I start off by the guides and you know, just remember to make sure to basically torque them to specs. You really want to have a torque wrench over here. The process of chain installation is fairly easy. It's just that it can, you know, it can jump on you from time to time, especially if you don't have a, like a proper spanners to hold the camshaft in place. Uh, you should see here now the point, a small dot on the sprocket or the CZVT, and this is where you, your chain colored link goes to. And there's another one on the exhaust side same 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 mark and you have to line them together with the chain
Okay, now the chain is in and this is important. As I said before, you have two dots on the sprockets for CZPT to set up the chain according to links that are colored. There's also one dot on the crankshaft in the bottom and it also needs to be set up with the chain's colored link. So do look at this very carefully. I don't have a good video over here, but this is the important part. You really need to make sure that you're you know, lining up the sprockets to look at each other with the uh, grooves and then line up the dots with the chain. And when you turn the engine around, they don't have to go to the same spots. They, they won't go to the same spots up for like four turns or so. So make sure to get, get it right on the first try. You don't want to screw this up. Okay, and this is it. I just turn the engine a couple of times to check if everything is fine and, you know, start applying sealant on the, on the front of the engine, place your cover and start assembling the engine back together. I mean, that's that. Now, I have to say, uh, people are just throwing trash at this first, uh, first generation of Genesis Coupe, but I do kind of like this engine. Uh, not about the inter not for the internals, but for the fact how easy it is to work on. I mean, I'm not a professional and I could do this job in like two or three days if I would have the parts from the dealership without any delay. That's always an issue, right? You don't, need, you don't necessarily know what you need. Uh, but the job itself wasn't that hard. It just took me a bit of time because I had a lot of wait time for the parts itself. Um, now you want to, you may want to order ahead of time, you know, gaskets and like um, the pump, water pump for and the gaskets for it, for the water pump assembly. You may want to get the timing, uh, the rocker cover uh, gasket. Uh, you may want to get some of the pulleys for your serpentine belt. I mean, in my case, they are noisy, I did replace one, I need to get the remaining ones replaced. Um, pretty much it. And, you know, just a matter of putting it back, to, back together. Now, I didn't record the process of assembly, there was no point, this video would be just too long, it's already too long. Um, but I can tell you that I run the motor today and, or, you know, whatever, you are watching this, and it ran very smooth. I mean, the difference was, uh, it's there, it ran way better after the time gen chain job. So, worth doing it, especially, it's really not that hard and not that expensive. And, you know, if you're, if you're over 100k miles, you're essentially risking uh, the chaining to skip on you and you're risking your motor. So, yeah, hope this helps, guys. If any questions, just post them in the comments. I'll try to answer. Uh, and that's it. See ya.